What is up guys, welcome back to the Wildcat Wire, and today I would say we have a pretty big episode here on episode 10 of the Wildcat Wire. Um, on Sunday, the college football playoff was decided as number one Alabama is going to take on number four Oklahoma, and Clemson is going to take on Notre Dame, and there's a huge debate because Oklahoma was able to get that four spot, and there's a couple teams look looking in on the outside, and those two teams are Georgia and Ohio State. I mean, I think you can also – you can just have to debate on whether or not, like, some of these teams could have made it in. That's what we're going to do here in a little bit. But, I mean, this is by far the most exciting or dramatic playoff that we've had. Now, this is the fifth year, correct? Like, this is, this is what college football wanted when they created this playoff. They wanted everyone to be talking about, oh, who's going to be in? We want to have the four best teams, like, as more competition, the drama, you know, all the money with the revenues and stuff like that, all these ranking shows and everything. Like, this is what they wanted, was to have everyone talking about it. And I think they finally got it this year. Like, the past four years have been pretty dry, but we finally had it this year. Yeah. Uh, so, basically, we're going to kind of debate because um, – Nate personally feels that Georgia should have been in, added into the playoff. Me personally, I think it should have been Ohio State, but I do see why Oklahoma made it in. So I'm going to let Nate kind of re- put his case for Georgia. To start yeah, off. so I just want to say, first of all, my top four would be Alabama, Clemson, Georgia, and Oklahoma. And the reason I say that is because Georgia has the second best team efficiency. In, in the whole country, and that's only second to Alabama. Everyone, is, everyone can agree Alabama is the best team in college football. You know, they're 13-0 SEC champion for a reason. They, their really only close game this year was against Georgia. So, undisputedly, like, number one team. Uh, Clemson, you know, they're – I don't think Clemson has had the – good test. They're 47th in strength of schedule, which puts them between Georgia, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Clemson, and UCF. That puts them second to last on that list. So, I don't think Clemson's had the tough test either, but they're 13-0 for a reason. They've won all their games on their schedule, and I mean, they won their conference championship, but I just wanted to start off with this. Besides those two, conference championships they're so the committee is so inconsistent with how they grade every team, because two years ago we saw Ohio State, you know, not even playing in their conference championship, get in over Penn State, who they lost to head to head, and somehow Penn State was left on the outside looking in, but Ohio State was the number four team. I just don't understand how a committee can degrade a team like that because they say conference championships matter. But yet, I mean, they're doing, they're putting in Ohio State. They're putting in Alabama, who didn't win it last year. So, just want to say, if they're not going to count then, then why do they count now? We want to see the same kind of sort of grading system so teams can be consistent with what they want. And I don't think the committee's doing that right now. Um, just kind of going to end my part here before you take your turn. Um, Georgia is third in FPI, second in team efficiencies, which would put them inside the top four. And so I just think that they deserve to be in. They have, they might have two losses, but they played a good LSU team. And I think if you're playing an LSU team on the road like that, I think a lot of teams would lose that game. About 90% of college football would lose that game. So... I'll let you kind of take your turn here. Okay, so basically, I definitely see your argument on why you feel that uh, Georgia should be in because probably if Georgia was in any other conference, they probably would just fly through it, probably get in. But I'm kind of looking at this from the committee standpoint. You know, I know you say conference champion, conference champion, they've been inconsistent, but I feel that year was kind of different. You know, Penn State, who won, I think they either had – two or three losses that year? I th- they had two. Two. And um, they the really only good win that year was 
probably Ohio State because they got blown out by Michigan. That Penn State team did, uh, and I think they lost to, I think they lost to Pitt, and um, I don't know. Like, but that year was just kind of different because Ohio State only had one loss kind of going in. Yeah, they didn't make their conference championship, but they had a few good ones in their schedule that were able to propel them into that playoff. And with Georgia. When you have two losses, it's just really hard to put a team like you in. Obviously, the committee um, did look at Georgia. It didn't even look like Ohio State was in the argument, which who I feel should have been in the playoff, but I'll get back to that in a bit, uh, between Oklahoma and Georgia. But just this one thing, like Georgia, you know, they lost to LSU by 20. Their best win this year is a Florida team who is uh, who's now 10th best in the nation. Uh, but I just feel like two losses just really hurt. Also, I know you say that there was some bad calls in the Alabama Georgia game, but there's also some call like that Georgia made that probably weren't the smart. They missed a field goal that would have maybe even put the game out of reach. You know, sometimes you just like have to win games. If you can't find a way to win, like you might not be the best team. Like me personally, I feel that if they put like Georgia in just with like two losses because they almost beat Alabama, I feel that's like kind of given like a participation award a bit. I mean, I just think the committee wants the four best teams. And I think clearly Georgia is one of the top four best teams. And I kind of think that reflects in FBI and team efficiency, Georgia third, uh, Clemson second, Alabama first, and Michigan fourth in FBI. Um, And then in team efficiencies, which adds up the strength on your offense, defense, and special teams, they have Georgia second to only Alabama. So... That's just saying Georgia is probably one of the one of the four best teams in the country. And the committee wants the top four teams to play. They want to have the ultimate showdowns between the one and two kind of teams in the championship, like the teams that deserve to be there. And I don't think they're quite pushing for that. They just kind of want to say, like, oh, Notre Dame, you won your schedule. Like... Notre Dame had the 31st, 34th strength of schedule in the country this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, they don't even play in a conference championship. Like, at least credit for Georgia for actually winning their division and making their way to the conference championship, where we saw them actually winning by two touchdowns against Alabama at multiple points in that game. Like, we, this is a team that I even told you, like, is this an Alabama team that could be, like, top 10 teams ever because they haven't been touched by anybody like everyone said oh LSU can has a good chance at beating them they can win and then they lose 29 to 0 like this Alabama team is really good they had a Heisman caliber quarterback in Tua Tunga Viola um they had Jalen Hurts a national championship playing a uh, national championship game quarterback in there on the bench, you know, they had the superstar defense like they usually have. They have a really solid offense. They have a good run game. They have a good passing game. Some really good skill players. I mean, this is the Alabama team that everyone said was undisputedly the number one team. Like, nobody can beat them. No one's ever going to come within close to them. And this Georgia team almost won that game. Yeah, but <clears throat> this is just me thinking about this, you know. Well, let me ask you this question. If you almost beat a top team at home and you just barely miss out, would you still say, like, they're the better team? Because no f- in the SEC championship game, it's kind of it, – it's in Georgia. It's in Atlanta. A lot of Georgia fans were there. I'm saying, like, that was m- maybe even almost a home game for Georgia, and that gives them a huge advantage in that game. If it was at Alabama or, like, something like that, this game, like, could be something, like, completely different. You know, I really feel like sometimes fans play a part, and if you can't beat a team, I just feel that you have to win. Like, if you can't, if you can't pull out a win like that, that's you're not really showing the committee anything or really giving them anything to like put you in. I also think that goes back to the point then of you look at a team like Clemson or Notre Dame where they never really had the tests. Like, why are they in there if they didn't have the tests of see if they can win a game or not? Because, I mean, they had no controversy in some of their games. I mean, even if you look at Notre Dame, they almost lost to a five-win USC team. Or Ohio State, they almost lost to a four-win Nebraska team. 
they had to win in double overtime to Maryland. They lost by 29 to Purdue. So I think Ohio State was a good team. Dwayne Haskins is definitely one of the top three players to win the Heisman this year. But I just think that they're too inconsistent to be in the college football playoff. And I don't think that they're a top four team. Uh, and, so how do you feel about Oklahoma getting in there? Like, not, not thinking about Georgia, kind of like what the committee chose. How do you feel about Oklahoma? I mean, I think Oklahoma's top four team. They're one of the best offenses in the country. I know the defense is in the latter half of the college football. So they really have a weakness on that side of the ball. But, I mean, you look at this offense, and it's – I mean, it's championship caliber offense. I know you're going to say, well, defense wins championships. Everyone's going to say defense wins championships. But that offense with Kyler Murray, they have a pretty good run game. I mean, wide receivers on the outside. Like, this team is – that team is good. And I think they're definitely deserved to be in, especially when they kind of rolled over Texas in the manner, manner that they did. Um, yeah, but – Let's kind of like switch gears here a little bit, kind of just looking at the f- top four teams. How do you think Oklahoma's going to be able to play against Alabama? Because I really think that their defense is – might not even like – it's going to be really tough against a really good Alabama offense, I would say. I th- I, I'll just be honest. I think Oklahoma has no shot to win this game. I would not be surprised if Alabama wins by three or four touchdowns. I think it's plain and simple. They don't have the defense to kind of – match up with the way Alabama does. When you go up against a team, they haven't had, I know West Virginia was their best team, and they allowed 50-something points to West Virginia. And if you're going to do that against an offense that is statistically better in Alabama, then I don't think they have a shot to win that game. Because there's no way that they're going to put up 50 points to keep themselves in a shootout against the number one or two defense in the country. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think Oklahoma just – their offense is, like, really good, but, you know, Alabama has a heck of a defense. And they have for years. Yeah, and I know Nick Saban, he's going to find bits and pieces of Oklahoma's offense that are not good, and he's going to be able to expose that easily because he's just that good of a coach. Let's kind of switch to the Clemson-Notre Dame game. Now, I think this is going to be a really good game. Two teams that haven't really – I wouldn't say they really proved anything because they haven't got that big win. Clemson, their only ranked win is against NC State, who's not even ranked now. And also against Pitt, who probably wasn't that great because Central Florida blew out Pitt. And same with um, Notre Dame. Their best win is Michigan. As we saw, Michigan wasn't even able to compete against Ohio State. Yeah, I mean, Notre Dame, I think... It brings up the argument of conference championships for Notre Dame. And uh, let's be honest, they should be in a conference. I mean, you put them in the ACC with the division with Pitt and all those other teams, I, th- I believe it's the coast. It's What's the two ACC divisions, the coastal and the something else? Yeah. But, I mean, I think a national cha- a conference championship game between Notre Dame and Clemson would have been star-studded. And I think... Notre Dame kind of deserves to be in a conference just like everybody else and they can't take the cheap way out and saying oh we won our schedule when the best team they played was Michigan week one of the season. Well also I think with Notre Dame is they don't want to lose that NBC contract which I think is kind of dumb but I understand it makes some money but that's like one of the arguments I've heard that Notre Dame has said about not being a conference they have a TV deal. And I think the thing is with Notre Dame you have the ability to play a schedule of Kind of whoever you want. You know, they want they want to keep the Michigan rivalry going. They want to keep their five, six ACC games a year going. And, you know, they want to keep their traditional ones like the Stanford, the USC. Like, I can kind of see where they come from that. But also it goes to a point where you need a conference. Like, they say conference, champion, conference championships matter. Notre Dame didn't play in one. They just got to sit on their couches and watch all the games this past weekend. So besides that, Clemson, I know they're a great team. Trevor Lawrence is good. They have seven or eight number 
first round picks on that defense, but I think Clemson will just have too much over Notre Dame. You know, they're Notre Dame is better than they were last year. They were two years ago. They were last time they played in the national championship against Alabama. This is a better team. Um, I just don't think that they're up to the level that kind of Clemson is. So I'm going to kind of go back to talking about the playoff, and I just kind of want to talk about Ohio State, and then we'll probably just kind of lead this into the Urban Meyer situation. So I feel Ohio State um, should have made the playoff, me personally, because I think that they have better wins in Oklahoma. They might not have, like, the better stats. Oklahoma, Ohio State was inconsistent, but I think the Big Ten is a better conference than the Big 12. I think that having that win against Michigan, you know, we were talking about college basketball kind of relating it a bit. They have more quad one wins. So yeah. I just kind of think that Ohio State had, a better, had better wins, and I think they just have the better team as a whole, and I think they should have been in. I mean, Ohio State won their big games. I think you can't say much more than that. I know they had kind of like slip-ups, if you want to say, where they ended up winning their games like Nebraska, Ohio State, Minnesota. But, I mean, they took care of their business when they had to. You know, they won the Big Ten Conference against Northwestern. You know, they won the Michigan State game. They won the Michigan game. Uh, They beat Penn State. So, I mean, they kind of won where they needed to and where they had to to kind of get themselves in. But I just think that Purdue loss is just – it's so – Purdue's a better team than Mm 6-6. I think watching them, you will agree with that. The Big Ten West is gruesome this year. Everyone is just beating each other because, you know, you see, like, Iowa win 63-0 over Illinois a couple weeks ago. And then you'll go back and see, like, Minnesota destroy Purdue – at one point, Minnesota's like hadn't won a game mm-hmm. in the Big Ten West. And then they destroyed Wisconsin. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> it's just so weird to kind of base everything off the Big Ten West. But I mean, it gives them a gives Ohio State the opportunity to kind of like sit over in the East and say, "Oh, we played all these tough teams on like the West." You know, we're they showed it in the conference championship. The East is still better than the West. Mm-hmm. So let's kind of continue on in Ohio State and there's some big news this morning so as just just some minor news minor like small news. news no one's going to care about uh Urban Meyer after the Rose Bowl was going to retire and right away on January 2nd the offense coordinator Ryan Day who head coached their first two or three games uh I believe it's their first it was the first four that oh uh, first four that first four was that he coached and he will become the new head coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes um Let's say this, Urban Meyer was a heck of a coach. I know I had some other strong words to say. You know that the off-season controversy before the year where he ultimately was suspended for the first four games, to be honest, I think everyone said that he should have been fired for his job, for what happened with the whole Zach and Courtney Smith situation. I believe that he should have been fired right when they – Right when that whole situation started, you got to say, it, Urban Meyer, if you're trying to cover up that, there's some something going wrong here. Um, but ultimately, Urban Meyer was a great head coach. But remember, he said he was retiring from Florida. He took, what, two, three years at ESPN, and then he came back to Ohio State. So I'm not going to be – I'm not going to sit here and – Say it's a forever farewell to Urban Meyer because I wouldn't be surprised if he comes back to an FBS school. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked that much either, you know. He's still, like, I just think that the cyst in his brain, I think that's what he said, uh, is just kind of like really what's been kind of going on. Like, he's got a lot of migraines, and, I mean, that was ultimately the reason. You People could probably say that the whole Zach Smith situation, like, could be a reason why... But, you know, he's I mean, he's not that old. He's only 54. So he still has a lot of years left. Like, he could easily coach another team in the near future. But ultimately now he's saying that he's retiring. Uh, he was a good coach. He, I would say he did a lot for the game. I and mean, he won three national championships. He 
did a really good job when he took over Utah back in the early 2000s. I mean, what he did at Florida is amazing. What he did at Ohio State, leading them back from their whole situation down there was great too. But, I mean, he was a really good coach. He's one of the best coaches in college football, and I think you had to put him 1-2 with Nick Saban. Yeah, even Utah. He really put Utah on the map, and I don't think Utah would be where they are where they are at in the Pac-12 without him. No, they wouldn't. So, I mean, you have to credit. Urban Meyer was a great coach, but I think when you look at it in a Nebraska standpoint of view, like I was this morning, you know, this Big Ten finally opens up for somebody. Jim Harbaugh has had trouble and trouble trying to beat that Ohio State team. He hasn't done it in his four or five chances yet. So, I mean, this really opens it up. Michigan State now really has a – I think we can't say a lot about Ryan Day. He doesn't have a head coaching job. This is his first one at Ohio State University. Um, but, I mean, I think when you lose a head coach like they did in Urban Meyer, you know, your Mark D'Antonio's, your um, Jim Harbaugh's, your Paul Chris, your Scott Frost now finally have a chance to kind of put themselves up there, even with Kirk Ferentz. So – I mean, it's going to be a huge battle now in the Big Ten, I think, on both divisions because that conference championships game is going to matter a whole lot more than it does now. Yeah, so I think I was thinking that uh, we should go through and kind of look at the New Year's Six Bowls this year. Um, What what kind of New Year's Six Bowl has really stood out to you so far after the selection on Sunday? I mean, let's say the New Year's Four because two of them are the – yeah, not in the um, years. <laughs> through the two playoffs, but I mean, I think that UCF LSU game really has a good opportunity for Central Florida. You know, they're they've won twenty four straight games now. Mm-hmm. Um, they haven't they haven't lost in two years, and to finally get themselves a chance against LSU, who I know they they're nine and three. People are gonna say, well. I mean, look at them. They lost three games this year. And that LSU team is a lot better than the record is saying. Um, but it gives UCF another chance, like they did last year against Auburn. You know, a quality SEC team who, I mean, it, I'm kind of lost in what I'm saying here. It gives them another chance like they did against Auburn. National television, quality opponent that's in the best conference in college football, I mean, it gives them the stage to kind of perform and let everyone kind of open their eyes. Like, you win this game, I think now everyone's actually giving you credit instead of saying, oh, you didn't play schedule, you play in the American Coast Conference, um, the American Athletic Conference. Um, I mean, give them the opportunity to play. That's what they're doing. Yeah, one of the bowl games that I'm really looking forward to is definitely Georgia-Texas. I know we were talking about earlier, you're saying, oh, Texas is a better team than LSU, and they're, they're lost because Oklahoma's only lost. I mean, I mean I, give... my argument was LSU is a better team than Texas, yeah. and if you play LSU on the road, it's going to be a tough game for Georgia to play, kind of defending their loss more as Oklahoma's loss to Texas. Um, yeah. But this will be – I think this would be kind of like a good kind of test – like, we'll really see a Texas team that has beaten Oklahoma going, against, going up against Georgia. It will really explain a lot and kind of see if the committee was really right with what they're doing. Because if Georgia goes in there and blows out Texas, like, I know you're going to be telling me, like, oh, Georgia should have been in the playoff. I mean, I think it will defend – it will not – the committee's decision to put, the M, put them in will not be defended if they go out and they win by 30 against Texas. And I think this Georgia team really kind of has a chance. But Texas has played some pretty close games. I know they weren't blown out by Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship, but they it didn't feel the way that it should have. Like, Texas was never really in it, mm-hmm. if you think about it. Yeah, and then obviously we got – Ohio State, Washington, but I don't really think that's going to explain a lot. Washington's in the Pac-12. I think Ohio State's probably just going to 
brush right through them personally, but Washington's from? Washington's ranked ninth. I mean, the Pac-12 just Pac-12 weak. needs to figure themselves out. I know they've been left out now for the past two years. The only reason why Washington was even in was because they went undefeated, and so they've been struggling more at more than the Big Ten has, and so this Rose Bowl will really. This Rose Bowl means a lot to the conference. If they can beat Ohio State, a team that people argue, like you, say they should be in the college football playoff, I think it finally earns them some more respect. But they have to show out in these bigger games against a team like Ohio State on national television in the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. Uh, Isn't there one more... Uh, game here. Yeah, it's the it's the Cotton Bowl. Um, no, the Cotton Bowl is the, no Cotton Bowl is the playoff game. Oh, uh, Florida and Michigan in the, the Chick Fil A Peach Bowl, which I, me personally, you had a really good shot at putting Florida against Central Florida, but at Michigan Florida Part Three, the rematch that I don't know if people really wanted, but all in all, Michigan and Florida are playing again. I mean. I think that has the opportunity to be a pretty good game. Florida's not bad. Michigan, obviously, they had a good season. They were in the top four. They had a shot at being in the college football playoff, but they didn't make it there. But I think that has the opportunity to be a good game. But, I mean, people will still say the Peach Bowl doesn't deserve to be New Year's Six. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's going to do it for us here on the Wildcat Wire. I'm Jake Janicek. And I'm Nate Thomas. And we'll, guys, we'll catch you guys next time.